Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's December the 15th, 2021. Welcome to What Now America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. Today's title is Build Back Better Bill Has Taken a Turn for the Worst. And with me to discuss this topic, the, the social infrastructure bill is Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Jay. Jay, you know, this bill has gone through, like all bills, even the Affordable Care Act or the, the physical infrastructure bill, you know, they go through their twists and turns, you know, it's, it's on again, it's off again, oh, it's in dire shape, oh, it looks like things are clear sailing, and, you know, that's the nature of, of legislation in, in the federal government. But this one really has been uh, through its twists and turns, and, and most recently, um, reports are that President Biden's discussions with Joe Manchin and getting his support on the Build Back Better Act is in dire sh shape. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, Joe Manchin is, is, is hesitant, he didn't want to go past 1.75. After you add on long-term um, effects of this bill, that includes the child credit, um, the child uh, tax credit and the Affordable Care Act provisions, well, the CBO has scored this at close to $3 trillion, which Joe Manchin is certainly balking at. So let me ask you this question, how important is it for Joe Biden that this Build Back Better Act gets approved and passed in the Senate and becomes law? And second part of the question is, to what degree, even if Joe Manchin agrees to uh, sign on to the bill in the Senate, what's going to happen to it with the progressives in the House of Representatives? Now, let me throw a first question in as to I think it's going to pass. Um, and the answer is it may not. It may languish. Uh, we're at the end of the year, effectively. Um, and, uh, you know, the Republicans still oppose it. There's a, a certain amount of, mm, what do you want to call it, resistance out there, um, based on all this discussion with Manchin about how it's going to cost too much. And there's a question of credibility, a credibility for Biden and cre credibility for the progressives. Now that it has been discovered by one of the agency that reviewed the bill that it was actually going to cost much more than Biden said it was going to cost. This uh, suggests a dis disingenuity, uh, disingenuity on Biden's part and his administration, which would be a horrendous mistake because, you know, the most important thing he has is, is trust and confidence. And this may cost him. Um, in terms of that trust and confidence. The other thing is, I would say this bill is different from every other bill that he's been involved with because it's so much more money, so much more delay, so much more contention. Um, so, you know, this one may not make it. And that leaves him with the problem of whether to sign the, uh, what is it, $1.2 trillion bill, which he said he was holding up on until he had his BBB ready. If his BBB doesn't get ready, what is he going to do? And if he signs it anyway, which I think he should and will anyway, um, he's going to lose more credibility. Uh, he's going to be look very, very weak that he had to back, you know, walk back all of his assurances and, um, you know, his the architecture of what he wanted to do, linking the two the two bills. So I think um, he's in trouble over this. Manchin is doing predictably what Manchin does. It's not a surprise, although I question his motives. Um, and of course, the progressives, they don't look so good, but they're not going to like this at all if they lose what they've been fighting for for the past, what, 90 days. So we're not in a good place. Um, what did you call it in the title? Build Back Better Bill Just Got Worse. I would say it just got much worse. And the Biden administration is in deep kimchi. <laughs> yes, good point. What happens to Joe Biden if this doesn't pass? What, what does this do for his further eroding ratings and potentially the 20, 2022 midterms? Um, this is a big promise he's put out there before the American public and to his fellow progressive uh, Democrats as well. Well, you know, uh, what, what's the, you know, what have you done for me today kind of analysis? Well, <clears throat> what he's done before, which you could give him credit for, is history. And what is on the table now is what is, is, what is important. And I think if you judge him, and mm, the country will judge him, on the Build Back Better bill, he ain't going to look so good. It's been the cornerstone of his legislative initiative. 
uh, the cornerstone of his promise for the social safety net, for the future of the country, for recovery of the country. And if it fails, and it has you know, many indications that it might fail, um, <clears throat> then he is, his presidency has been undermined. And he's done it himself in many ways. Um, his presidency is sort of on the rocks, and that means that uh, when it comes time for, you know, the Democrats to try to win in 2022, they have a, the, this impediment, serious impediment, that uh, the Democrats, you know, people can say the Democrats can't get it done. Um, and when he, if he tries to run for president in 2024, same thing, they're going to say, you know, poor old Joe, he can't get things done. So I think this is a, um, a crisis moment for his administration and his political future. All right. Thank you, Jay. Winston, you know, not only is the amount uh, an issue with Joe Manchin on his uh, willing to sign off, sign on to this bill in the Senate, but also now he's citing the 6.8% um, the of inflation and that um, arguing that all this money that's going to be put back in the pocket of Americans, particularly uh, families that have kids because of the child tax credit amount, um, that this is going to add further inflationary pressures on the economy because there's going to be um, much more money in um, households and that presumably that much extra money will be used for, for uh, consumer spending, adding more, more pressure. Does he have a point in that? Uh, President Biden says no, it's just the opposite. Uh, what's, your, what's your opinion on whether or not Build Back Better Act uh, is inflationary or not? We, uh, you'd see when it, when it all came out, but honestly, we are having serious, not serious, it's not serious. We're not, we're not in, uh, you know, Germany in, in, the, in the 30s. It's not hyperinflation. There's, there's higher inflation. Winston, you saw, you saw the news this morning that the Fed is going to raise rates through the year, it, it, a number of increases. Cool, yeah, it'll cool it down a little bit. They have a target rate. Honestly, we've got pretty stable monetary policy in this in this country. And at the end of the day, who cares? Who cares if inflation is a little bit higher? As long as wages and salaries are keeping up with that, uh, this is a uh, you know a byproduct of just sort of this. It, it's really incredible how we've come out of this whole COVID shutdown, economic disaster, um, reasonably um, intact. So, you know, on the other hand, Joe Biden needs to placate Joe Manchin. That's it. Whatever little stumbling blocks he comes up with, whether it's 6.8% inflation, he would have said it if it was 5.2 or 3.8. It doesn't really matter. There's whatever it is that Joe Manchin's stumbling on. He needs to say, what is it you need? What is the um, sales point that you need to take home to sell this thing? Or are you just obstructing it? So uh, on the other hand, well, you know, I'm not sure Joe, that, Manchin, that... Joe Manchin doesn't want the tax credit for children. He, he wants that out even though he hasn't fully admitted it, he has real issues with it. And of course, that's a cornerstone of what the progressives want. They want that money into those family households. Um, you know what? If anything that's else other than that, do you up, think? If that's going to keep him up at night and prevent the thing from going, then, then get rid of it. He's got, a, they got about a reality here. Um, and if they can pass something... Don't let the the uh, what, what don't let perfect be the enemy of good or what, whatever the saying is. Let's get something passed that we can get passed. Uh, in the olden days, we didn't have child care credits. This is a new idea. The progressives don't have anywhere to go in this. The alternative is nothing. Um, as much as they want to move forward on these issues. America may not be ready to move forward on them, just even if they're the best things in sliced bread. Uh, these are new ideas. I mean, people getting direct funding for for their kids and 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 subsidizing that. Um, it, it does make things a lot easier. So would it make it for um, adult care? You know, and or for for folks that need um, uh, all the unpaid labor that mostly women do, uh, taking care of their parents and and in laws. Uh, so we haven't had this in America before. It's a new idea. Let's not not sink this whole thing. If that's what Joe Manchin needs, give Joe Manchin what he needs and move forward. And I would say that actually Joe Biden's biggest accomplishment is just being Joe Biden right now. No one is clamoring in this country for this build back better stuff. The, the average man on the street or lady on the street doesn't even know what this is, what's in it, 
what it's about. They don't care as long as the, the, there's food in the stores, they have their job, things are going All right. Well, let me well. hit that one point real quick before I go on to Cynthia, and that is they don't care what's the benefit to the Democratic Party to get this thing passed. I mean, obviously, they need some victories before they go into midterm 2022. If, if this is nothing on their radar screen, you know, other than just families, um, is, isn't there something a little bit for everybody in this bill? Let me let me add one point to Tim's, and that is, if the bill doesn't pass, you can bet the GOP will attack Biden from kingdom come. Yeah, for what? For that's not that's increasing the, for not increasing the deficit and not for being weak handouts. for I, being weak and not following through on his own initiative. Yeah, well, I, I the thing is, what Joe Biden has done is he's just been calm and saved our nation from absolute chaos. That is what he's contributing to right now. People, I don't know that they're really worried about the Build Back Better as just having a stable, reinforcing government. And part of that is a normal government is, is passing bills, certainly, but go to the chaos we were in two All years right. ago. It's, it's a marked difference. That's what Joe Biden is doing right now, yeah. the slow and steady. It's not- Okay. Yeah, Winston. Uh point and but people have short-term memories that's the problem Cynthia I saw you shake your head in the negative when uh Winston was talking about uh basically finding out what Joe Manchin want uh, to sign on to this bill and placate him um did I perceive that incorrectly that you were shaking your head no at that point <laughs> you, you perceived me correctly I don't think we should cater to Joe Manchin and don't forget that Kristen Cinema's in the background she's right behind him and we don't even know what she wants so this is the thing that makes me angry angrier i should say with joe manchin and that is that he agreed he sat down with biden and and gave his word that he was going to go forward with this and vote for it um go ahead and pass that first infrastructure the you know bipartisan infrastructure and don't worry I give you my word, I will sign for this. And so the progressive said, okay, we're gonna trust Joe Manchin. We're gonna go forward with the other bill. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. It wasn't Joe Manchin. That was a promise from Joe Manchin to President Biden. Uh, it was President Biden that said, trust me on this. I've got Joe's vote. Trust me, pass the infrastructure, the physical in infrastructure bill, and we'll get the other one too. But he said, pass it first. Um, trust me on this. What happens to Joe Biden's credibility with progressives if this thing that, That's where I was going with that, See, And so here, that's, I think, where he's going to run into some trouble in, with Congress, is that they he made that promise. But it wasn't necessarily just his promise. It was... Joe Manchin's promise to Biden, or he wouldn't have said it. So I, I think it's still the responsibility falls back to Joe Manchin. I don't think they should spend one more minute on this bill. I think they ought to, and there's, a, there's an article, a really good article in Business Insider. Um, and <clears throat> the title is, Senate Democrats may pull a switcheroo. I hope they do, um, to punt Biden's big <laughs> bill into 2022 in favor of a last ditch push for voting rights legislation. I think all business should stop cold and nothing should be done. Nothing should be talked about. If we don't have voting rights, who cares if this legislation goes through? Who cares if Joe Biden looks good or bad? If we don't have a stop, on the state legislatures that are getting more and more and more in place and more entrenched that can change what the votes are when they come in. Now, if well, there may be there may be a lot of people that agree with that position if this doesn't get done before Christmas. Uh, but you know, Christmas is ten days away, and uh, you know, before the legislators go home. And so, you may have a good point in that, and I think maybe a, a lot of people will agree that um, the, they gave it their shot. They didn't get it done. Now, focus the rest of your time on the voting rights bills. Right. And we know that Mansion is on board for one of those bills. So, I mean, if we've already got him on board, I say, why aren't we going forward with that? And, and so just pump that down the road. Who cares? It's, it's too much of a, 
I feel, Haven't there been too many promises made, though, to those families that in the suburbs and wherever that you're going to get your child credit and we're going to take care of you. And we're going to put we're going to make you uh, back better. We're going to build back better from the pandemic. <laughs> Hasn't the promises been laid out? And what happens when that doesn't happen? They're just making it delayed while they work on mansion and get everything straight. That's what I think. So I don't think the people are going to care. I really don't. And I think if they get out there and they push how important voting rights is. And I disagree with Jay as far as Biden being on the ropes, his presidency being on the ropes. I, I don't know as I, I agree with that. I think that um, the media is really sort of demonizing the guy. And I don't quite understand why. Um, instead of touting all the things that he has done, right the the infrastructure the the um american uh, rescue plan things like that are big and saved a lot of households for a long time granted that tax credit they got their last 300 per child this month right and they're not going to get one next month so they might start feeling it next month but right now before christmas they should stop all business and only do voting at least that's my opinion. Well, that's why we have you on. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> hey, you know, I want to switch gears here. I want to go to what's going on with the January 6th commission, uh, com committee and specifically what's come out about Mark Meadows, the um, chief of staff for Donald Trump. Uh, Jay, going to you, um, you know, Mark Meadows said, I'm going to cooperate with the, the committee. And then he says, nope. I'm not going to. Um, what do you think happened? In, in light of all the text messages that have been reported on the last two days that make him look very, very bad, and it makes him look like he's very much entwined in the pre-planning or some of the, um, it is indicated that he somehow was running the show or in, in, in conjunction with others, running the show as January 6th um, invasion took place of the Capitol. Uh, why do you think he, he reversed gears on cooperating with the committee? He got a text message from Trump. That's why. He's operating under Trump's instructions. That's Trump's, um, you know, signal approach. Deny, say no. Um, that's why he's doing it. And um, uh, it doesn't, doesn't fall in you his know, favor I add on to your comment it's, there. Uh, you know, in his book, remember, he threw Trump under the bus about the possibility of him spreading COVID a week earlier to Christie and all those uh, a bunch of people. And then Trump said uh, false news. And, and Mark Middle said, I agree. <laughs> well, there's another possibility. And that is, you know, he's made a legal analysis with his lawyers and decided um, that it, it really doesn't work for him to go and testify. And it's all enshrouded in the Fifth Amendment question, whether he would take the fifth if he testified. Um, I believe there's enough information in there um, to prosecute him without his testimony. Uh, those documents and the testimony of others, which they're getting, may make a, a pretty good case against Meadows, um, in which case, uh, how can he help himself by taking the fifth? Not at all. Um, so uh, he may have decided, you know, looking at it from the point of view of the committee, looking at it through the committee's eyes, looking at it through Merrick Garland's eyes, um, you know, that he, he can't win by appearing. He'd rather take his chances uh, on a criminal contempt uh, than appearing. He's in trouble because as this as this is unfolding, um, it does look like, you know, insurrection, of course. It looks like conspiracy, of course. And he's in the middle of that conspiracy. It looks like old fashioned treason is what it looks like. That's pretty serious. Uh, so I, I think he's, he's uh, skating around on those issues and he's made a calculated legal decision that it's better for him not to appear and take the fifth, um, you know, than to appear, take the fifth, be prosecuted anyway. Um, I think he will be prosecuted whether he appears or not. And, right. And I will take that that point to Winston. Winston, um, if he does nothing, he will most likely, uh, like Bannon, uh, be recommended for criminal prosecution for uh, contempt of Congress. Do you think that occurs or does he switch gears again and uh, goes back to the committee and says, OK, I'll cooperate? 
I, I agree with Jay. There's no um, benefit for him except being a um, a real American to say, this is what happened. This was my part in it. I was wrong and exposing that. Do we think that there's that level of self-reflection or ability? No, uh, it's not going to happen. As I've said before, they just need to keep subpoenaing all these records, all these texts. Oh, didn't he have a burner phone that he threw away and 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 went somewhere? But I think that probably somewhere in the Google verse or AT and T verse, they keep all of that stuff for about a year or two, just in case stuff does come up. Uh, maybe they keep it forever in some server in Utah. They're going to find the information. I think the last uh, that I heard was that there was the challenge of this, uh, you know, supposed uh, executive privilege that was denied by the uh, the it was the the district uh, court in Washington, uh, the federal district court, if I'm remembering correctly. And so there will be the challenge to the Supreme Court. But I'm imagining that they're going to come down and say. Congress does have a unique and important role in investigating its very potential overthrow during that January 6th um, uh, insurrection. And so they do have the, the need to have these records. There is no uh, executive privilege here. And well, because did, the if, if there was executive privilege, if there was executive privilege, didn't he relinquish that when he appeared on Fox News and gave countless interviews? And didn't he relinquish that in the publication of his book? Um, right, Tim, yeah. that's a very good point. You know, when I listened to the, the Fox rather the MSNBC on this one word legally is on the screen in neon and it's waiver. If he had a privilege, he waived it. He gave him all the documents. He made public statements in every which way, published the book. He can't claim privilege after he waives the privilege. And also we can't go by what he wrote in his book. I mean, that's nice that he talked about the Donald being the super spreader and all of that. But what's real is in the texts and the emails and somewhere, someone down the line has had a copy of those and put in a flash drive and, and or send them to himself or herself and and kept those. And those are going to come out. It's just like the, the little old lady in, in Watergate. And they said, what's your job? She said, oh, I make the recordings, the recordings of what? Oh, all the secret recordings of the president. Oh, that's <laughs> an interesting job. We didn't know that you had that. There's going to be that lady that comes forward and says, here's the emails. Here's the thread. Here it is. Mark Meadows doesn't need to do anything at this point. Except hey, Winston, and Tim, they may already have that, you know? I mean, it, it wouldn't take rocket science to subpoena the telephone company or the you know provider for the phone or the email or the text. They may already have it. If you know, if we were there, all, all four of us, we would have subpoenaed that already. That's true, I'm but I think it. it is being upheld right now just uh, shortly, but I think very soon we'll be seeing releasing this. And then, of course, Tucker says that uh, Liz Cheney's only doing this so she can be president. And I was like, not, not the worst thought in the world if she takes over the Republican Party again. It's not going to happen, but um, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's so dumb. I, 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 let's let the evidence speak for itself. They need to make all haste. We're already in December here. We're a year on to this thing. I agree with Cynthia. They need to start cracking the whip where we really need uh, focus, which is what happened a year ago, who laid it out, who was guilty, how do we stop this, and then voting rights so that we're not finding ourselves in the same quagmire again. Hey, Tim, I, you know, can I just su suggest a question for you to pose to Cynthia? Of course. <laughs> How close are we to election, to the time when people start voting absentee? It's not November, maybe it's October, maybe it's September. And, and that means it's like eight months away. Um, and, um, you know, what, 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 what happens now? Can this committee do a job between now and what, well, August? I, I, I want to step on uh, Stephanie's toes for tomorrow's show about this topic. But since you've prompted it, I guess that's what we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia, Cynthia, is this stuff going to get out? Is the report from the uh, January 6th committee going to get out in time uh, uh, before the midterm elections. What's the, uh, what's the drop dead date, in your opinion, that whether they have all the subpoenas uh, satisfied from all the people they're subpoenaing, trying to get direct testimony, does it matter? Don't they already have the facts? Don't they already have the texts? And they're going to go and do the report regardless. What's the drop dead date that this report needs to be out by? 
I would say March at the very latest, but they're talking about coming out with this soon. They've interviewed 300 plus um, uh, witnesses that have come in voluntarily. And they have, as Winston was saying, and, and Jay saying too, that we have, they already have tons of emails and text messages that they already have. And they're sort of talking about that. Um, so after the vote to refer uh, Mark Meadows for um, contempt of Congress, there was a few of them that came out and spoke to the reporters outside. And all of them sort of hinted that this is all gonna happen soon, that they, they understand the importance of this timeline that you're referring to. Now, I have a quote <laughs> from uh, Steve Schmidt that he put on, on Twitter that I, I just love this. <laughs> Says, even Johnny Cochran wouldn't be able to get Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram, and Brian Kilmeade out of their jam. <laughs> Those emails are incontrovertible proof, the type that is seldom seen caught in the act proof, like video of a drunken burglar falling through the roof of a store proof. <laughs> so I think there's a So lot he's saying that uh, Fox News is not uh, fair and impartial? Is that, what he's, is that what he's trying to imply? What? He's trying to imply that they're in a lot of trouble. It goes way beyond Ooh. just, you know, not... Uh, news and just opinion and all of that sort of stuff. This is the kind of stuff I don't even think that Rupert Murdoch can get them out of trouble because I think they have compromised themselves in ways that they showed through emails that the January 6th committee now has in their possession. So, okay, um, all right. I, and I also think that we're also, they're also getting a lot of information about sitting congressmen and women. So there's, there's more than just Trump and his little cronies in the admin, you know, in the administrative office, but I mean, an executive office, there's some in Congress and they've got some proof. So well, they all right. exactly what is happening, but they will tell us they have a lot and it's going to happen soon. So okay. I'm going to trust that because I know that's, Probably the most important thing that needs to happen, voting rights and the January 6th committee report are the two things that absolutely have to happen before voting happens in 2022. Closing comments. Oh, goodness. Voting rights, voting rights, voting rights. Okay. Vo <laughs> wait, wait, one more. Voting rights. Voting rights. All right, Jay, do you have a last closing comment? Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> Cynthia is brilliant, except when she disagrees with me. Um, but on voting rights, I absolutely agree. And, on, on, <clears throat> you know, I mean, Biden could say, look, this is a congressional matter. I've given it my best shot. Now, you guys work it out or don't work it out. I'm moving on to other issues I consider more important. Uh, Warnock made a brilliant speech, not as brilliant as Cynthia would have made had she been there, a brilliant speech in the Senate yesterday. Um, you know, what he said was, if you guys can make exception on the filibuster for the purpose of um, funding the government, you can easily make an exception from the filibuster for voting rights, man, which is more important right now than anything else I can think of. It was, a, it was really a wonderful speech. It put him on the map, maybe for future president. Uh, I'm not sure where he fits against Liz Cheney, but you know, he's, he's definitely a, a large figure after that speech, especially. So I think we have to focus on that. I totally All agree. Right. And I think, as Cynthia says, I agree with her also that the next order of business is making sure this committee comes out right and comes out soon. All righty. Thank you, Jay. Winston, you get the final word and final comment. Uh, just a couple simple points. Uh, you, uh, Cynthia mentioned Johnny Cochran. I saw today in the, 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 the convoluted case. Remember, OJ, his, his famous client just got out of prison. Um, he was found not guilty in uh, one court, but then found guilty in a $37 million fine in civil court. So these things aren't always clear and cut and dried of how they appear on the surface. Um, and it's not to say that people will be ever brought to justice. Um, that said, the country is still sick. We faced a life-threatening moment less than a year ago. Dr. Biden is taking care of us while we recuperate. 
he needs space and time to do that. But just his calm, reassuring presence coming in the room and knowing that a sane, stable man is in charge of your care lets me sleep at night and uh, all Godspeed to him and uh, uh, and our, for our great nation to recover its health, its sanity, and its standing and uh, its uh, ethical, moral, philosophical uh, foundations that, it's, that has made it a great country and will continue to do so with any luck and hard work on the part of all of us. All righty. Thank you, Winston, for your, your wife words. Uh, that's all we have for today's show. Join us next week. Uh, but before I sign off, I do want to thank Jay Fidel, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and Winston Welch. Thank you for joining us for What Now America. Uh, again, next Wednesday, 11 o'clock. And until then, I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. Aloha. Aloha.